Good morning and welcome to this online worship from Harrowby Lane Methodist Church. We are online in August and also services will continue at Harrowby Lane Church on Sunday mornings at half past ten too. They will be live but not recorded. We will all be back together again in September so look forward to seeing everyone then. So let's just take a few minutes and prepare for worship. Put down what you are physically doing. Put down what is clouding your thoughts. And relax and allow God's presence to flood you. Allow God's spirit to enter your hearts, give you peace and inspiration and enlightenment. Let's give ourselves time and space to listen to God. And as we do that, just ponder on these words from Psalm 32. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your magnitude and endlessness. Whatever journey we are travelling on, you are there, either in front of us, leading us, walking alongside us, holding our hands, or walking behind us, gently encouraging us. May we turn today to listen to and learn more from you. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 10 to 20 Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices. What are they to me? says the Lord. I have more than enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of lambs 
of bulls and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths and convocations, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals, I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of blood as my worship to you. In surrender I must give my every part, Lord receive the sacrifice of the broken heart. Jesus, what can said to the pastor, I hate religion. The pastor said to the atheist, so do I. Our reading comes from Isaiah and it comes from the Methodist lectionary for today. And for a number of reasons, I find myself preaching once again for Harry Belaine on this Old Testament prophet. As I mentioned the last time I preached on this, 
This book can be subdivided into three, and this time we are looking at the very beginning of the first section. Whereas the second section of Eyes Eyes Full of Hope, this first section is rather dark. The main message of Isaiah to the people of Judah is that things are going wrong. Worship is given, but God has no place in that worship. The rituals of worship are meaningless unless they lead to a just society. This idea is repeated elsewhere in what we call the Old Testament, but it also occurs in the New Testament, notably in James, when he says, faith without works is dead. Yet it is not as simple as works is good, faith is bad. It is quite possible to do anything, whether in the name of God or otherwise, because you always have. It can become a false god all of its own. When this happens, we have religion, but we don't have faith. A tradition that develops for tradition's sake. Such traditions don't have to go back 200 or even 2,000 years. Modern churches have traditions just like traditional churches. And it isn't a rejection of traditional worship either. It's in fact a far bigger question than that. It is about Jesus in your worship and your life. This boils down to a rather simple double question. Why are you doing what you are doing and is God in it? Back in the 90s, the then newly established Soul Survivor Church realised that they were just going through the motions. So the band was stopped for a while. If this had been a traditional church, the equivalent would have been getting rid of the organ and the choir for three months or so. Out of this mini revolution came two things. New life in the church and the song When the Music Fades, written by Matt Redman, who was leading worship there at the time. Out of this come a number of other things. Firstly, their pastor, Mike Pilavacci, was wise enough to realise there was a problem. Secondly, he and the church were brave enough to be radical. Getting closer to God meant stopping doing the things that theoretically were being done in his honour. Now, a very different example, 30 years ago, a church nowhere near here was considering a building project. There were various objections from some people and one older individual said, this place will do for me. There are numerous arguments against this thought, the church being mostly for those outside it for a start. What about the next generation for another? But most of all, where is Christ in that statement, it will do for me? In the end, rightly or wrongly, after many delays, the building project went ahead. And so we get to our own lives and our own situation. Now the Methodist Church is actually in a lot of trouble. It needs radical change. Asked recently what was holding the church back, one of its leaders said, the membership. You see, the Methodist Church, like a number of other so-called free churches, is a sort of democracy. Democracies tend to be more stable than dictatorships, but they struggle when radical solutions are needed. There may well be people watching from other denominations at this point, and you may think, well, this doesn't apply to us, but don't switch off because whilst the Methodist Church may be the, the one struggling the most at the moment, and its membership may be dragging its feet, don't, you, don't think that you are immune from the same or similar. At the end of the day, this isn't about whether we should run soup kitchens or spend our time in constant prayer. The question is, are we doing what we are doing for religious reasons or for faith reasons? Because we always have or because God is in it. If God isn't in it, have we got the courage to stop it and change it? And change for the church, any church, is a four letter word. It takes courage to be an Isaiah and to call out what is wrong. It takes courage from the leadership, but it also takes courage and understanding from the membership. Stopping, pausing, listening, changing, working with the leadership, standing up to the leadership in love, they all take courage. Now preachers are asked to find the good news in everything. In second Isaiah it's easy, that's what it's all about. First Isaiah is more difficult. First Isaiah is calling the addicts out. 
You are doing religion, not God. You are addicted to what you're doing. But an ad addict needs to understand that they are an addict before anything can happen. And we are actually all addicts to something. Understanding that we're addicted to alcohol or drugs or gambling, understanding we're addicted to the good works we do or even the worship we lead or take part in. Any addiction excludes God. Hearing those words from Isaiah and understanding they apply to you or your church, that is painful. But that pain is the beginning of the healing, the change and the rediscovery of the real God, not the one you made up in your head. A new relationship with Jesus and his spirit in your life or your church's life, bringing that back once more. Now that is good news. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this morning. You know us inside out and we can't hide. In the quiet, in our homes, we can reveal our true selves to you. Not the people our church family want us to be. Not the people our family and colleagues want us to be. Not the person that we want us to be but the real person, the real me, that only you know. Although we are broken, confused and weak, we are wonderfully and beautifully made in your image. We are your precious children and you truly love us. You truly care for us and will bless us abundantly. Thank you, Lord. So we simply come, pouring out our hearts to you. You are majestic, everlasting, unending, and you deserve our best. You are our rock, our shelter, our place of safety. And Lord, may we search for our true selves, being who you would have us be true only to you and may you simply use us for your glory we ask these prayers in and through the loving name of jesus christ our lord and our savior amen
describing your heart on history's page. Make us again what we were made to be. Transform, revive, and heal Let us pray. Loving Lord, may we simply be yours this week. May we simply search for you and follow your call. Amen. It's been good to be with you this morning and we look forward to seeing you again next week.